Now, if you have an alcoholic family member and they're, they're becoming more and more belligerent, they're doubling down on their denial and their gaslighting techniques and their deflection is becoming increasingly worse in connection with their alcohol consumption. Uh, you know, in other words, they're blaming everybody. They're blaming the family, their parents, society, their school, uh, their kids, their spouse, everybody but themselves. And they don't have a problem. You have a problem with their drinking. They don't have a problem with their drinking, but you do. Uh, and yet it's affecting their job. It's affecting their relationships within their family, personally and professionally. Uh, and it's only getting worse. And the more that you try to confront it, the more they, they, they pull back uh, and they get worse in their defiance. What do you do in this case? So let's delve into uh, some of the different scenarios and possibilities of things to do and the limited options that, that continue as it gets worse. Now, if you have a scenario where the person is physically abusive, psychologically abusive, or verbally abusive, this is one scenario where you just need to part ways. Uh, you know, set extreme boundaries and, and get out of the situation. If there's children involved, you know, there's no way that anybody should have to live in that type of environment. No way. So make that decision, figure out a way to part ways in the most amicable way that you can and as soon as you can, period. Now, the real question is this, when someone is, when an alcoholic in your family is doubling down on their defiance, what does the family do then? Well, there's only a few options. Okay, you have to set a boundary. In other words, our relationship is going to change. Uh, if you don't alter your relationship, if you're not willing to go to a detox rehab and identify your denial, uh, then our relationship is gonna change. Uh, we're either gonna part ways or we're not gonna talk to you anymore or your, your existence in our life is gonna be much uh, drastically limited. Uh, unfortunately, there's only so many options families have and unless the person is ready to change, you can only deal with your side of it. You can only control your side of it. And you have to protect your own emotions, your own mental health. That is, should be your priority as well. Uh, now, we, you know, again, we need to support the alcoholic the best way we can. But if there's, no, if there's absolutely nothing but a wall there, there's only so much you can do as a family member. Your options are, have become extremely limited. And the thing is, if you have, you know, given your options, if you have defined your position with the alcoholic and there's still no movement, well, that's your answer. Sometimes the non-answer will be the answer. Uh, they, they have chosen alcohol over anybody else in their life, and it's part of the mental health disease. Uh, maybe you can just, you know, hope for the best. Maybe they will get to rock bottom. Maybe they will see the light. Maybe they will get into a position where they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. But again, it's not your, it's not your place to even figure that out. That, that the alcoholic has to figure that out. Uh, and you have to take care again of your own mental health. Unfortunately, uh, you know, if it's a spouse, a parent, a child, these are all scenarios that are very difficult to deal with. And again, if you want further insight to any of these types of scenarios, because every scenario is completely different, if you want more one-on-one -on -one insight, again, please schedule a breakthrough call. I've helped thousands of alcoholics, and just as importantly, I've helped their families, uh, which is really you know reason why I do this. And again, please like, share, and comment. We also have a Facebook group called Amanda, A Cautionary Tale of Alcoholism, which is becoming a very good support group. And again, thanks for listening.